meditation. I've been talking about meditation on my socials for a little while now. And so I thought I'd do a video, maybe on some top tips for you. Because we all want to meditate better. I have got the 30 day challenge coming up to get you into that regular habit of getting into meditation. So to, to form a new habit, we need to do something um, repetitively 21 times. So hence creating the 30 day challenge. So it, and it gives you a window that each meditation is between 20 and 30 minutes long, roughly. And it gives you a window of time every day to take that 20 or 30 minutes just for you to get into a regular meditation practice. Now, I'm sure many of you have problems around meditating and something that comes up really frequently for so many people is time. So my top tip, I'm going to do a series of top tips my top tip about time with meditation you don't have to have an hour to meditate in you don't want to try and carve an hour out of your day especially if you're working full time you've got little ones you've got you know every all the different hats you wear particularly as being a mum or, or, or even a dad of all the different hats you have to wear you do not need an hour a day to meditate in what you need is five minutes to start to get your regular meditation practice in, all you need is five minutes per day. And I'm going to ask you a question, and this might make you prickle. And if it does, well, it does. I'm not going to apologise for it. If at a 24-hour period, you can't find five minutes for you, what else are you not finding five minutes for for you in your day? So you could put your phone down for five minutes. Stop that mindless scrolling we all do. That, you know, God, we all do it, me included. Put your phone down for five minutes. So rather than mindlessly scrolling, meditate for five minutes. Set a timer on your phone. When you're in the shower, in the bath. You can even do it sitting on the loo. And um, when my son was little, trying to find five minutes to meditate was nearly impossible. So I, I get it. I get the struggle. So that's top. That's tip number one. Tip number two. Do it when you go to bed. That was the only time I had all day to meditate. I'd even tried getting up at 5.30 in the morning. So I had that sort of half an hour or an hour to myself in the morning to set myself up for the day. The minute he heard me move, he was up and out of bed and on the go. So I get why, you know, it's difficult to do it when you've got kids. So I used to do it at bedtime. So rather than go to bed at quarter past 10 or 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock, whatever it was, I would actually go to bed 15 minutes earlier and have that 15 minutes just for me to sit and meditate. I'd be sat up in bed meditating. Tip number two, do it at bedtime. If you've got no other time of the day, do it at bedtime. Tip number three, don't lay down to meditate. You will fall asleep, especially if you've got a full life. Meditating laying down really doesn't go. It doesn't mean that, you know, if you're having trouble sleeping and you go into a meditation practice and you need to, and you need to have that point of being able to get off to sleep, perfect time to do it. If you don't want to fall asleep, don't do it laying down. Tip number three. It doesn't have to be perfect. So your meditation space, allotted time. It doesn't need to be all zen and amazing. It can just be 
if you sit at the kitchen table and do it, if it's quiet, you just need five minutes of quiet that you carve out of the day for you. It's your space. So give all the kids, you know, husbands, kids, dogs, cats, whatever it is, <clears throat> set some boundaries that this is my time for five minutes each day. And then you can build on that. So top tip number four, wandering mind. Oh yes, that monkey chatter, bouncing thoughts. Don't try and control them. Don't try and stop them. And a really, <coughs> excuse me, I've still got a croaky voice. <coughs> a really simple way of tackling that mind chatter, that bouncing thoughts, is to ask yourself, I wonder what my next thought's going to be. Watch your mind go blank. It's really interesting. Staying with the mind chatter, top tip number five. The reason that our mind chatter kicks in when we try to go quiet is that we've been thinking about a thousand and one other things all through the day. And we never, ever give ourselves time to reflect, to pause or to recalibrate. So regardless of meditation, top tip number five is every single day at some point in the day, give yourself five or 10 minutes, not just to meditate, but to actually reflect on your day. And a really good way of doing that is to journal. Set a timer on your phone again. And just go and get a cup of tea, cup of coffee, whatever it is. And just sit down and write this stream of stuff that's just in your head going round. Because the minute you go quiet with trying to meditate, all that unconsciousness that's been sort of pushed down because you've had to deal with a hundred other things through the day or a million other things through the day. All of that consciousness then comes pouring out. And so if you struggle with the quiet mind, you struggle with trying to find that inner peace, that inner quietness, journaling is a really good way of, I call it mind dumping or brain dumping. You know, this is the scene from Harry Potter and um, oh, Dumbledore takes the stuff out of his head with his wand and pops it in the cold or anything. That's a bit like journaling. You take know, all the nonsense out of your head so your head's not too full. <clears throat> That's what journaling does. Number six, is there a number six? If actually sitting still and meditating isn't for you, do a walking meditation and really become aware of your feet and your body as you move. Yoga, Tai Chi, Qigong, <clears throat> walking, all of those things are all forms of meditation. And they're all forms of getting out of your head and into your body because our brain stops us being able to meditate because we've got into our heads and we can't get back into our bodies because our mind completely takes over. So any form of any kind of exercise will get you out of your head and into your body and calm everything down. No, I did have another one. What was the other one? There's one more just occurred to me. I know I've forgotten it. Mm. What was it? Oh, if you need a focal point, try crystals. So if you find that your attention is wandering, what you can do is hold a crystal. There's all kinds of different shapes and sizes. Depends on what you like. Obviously something like this maybe. And just focus on the crystal that's in your hand. The coldness of it or the warmth of it, the shape of it, the texture of it. And rather than going into that thinking mind, have that 
feeling? What can I feel? How does it feel in my hand? Again, bringing you into your body. Again, it only takes three to five minutes, but they're all the beginnings of a meditation practice. Let me know in the comments below how you get on, what your thoughts are, what you tried and what works. However, remember, it doesn't have to be perfect because we are all perfectly imperfect. I'll see you in the next one.